Repairing a south with 12 inch steam pump, part 3. Dismantling the pump to machine the corroded port face. I showed clearly in the last episode how badly corroded the port face was. So now in order to machine it, I need to dismantle it so I can just have the cylinder as one lump to put in my milling machine. I still haven't figured out what this pipe does, so for the moment I'm going to remove it. I need to temporarily remove the plastic hand wheel on the valve that's connected to the exhaust outlet to allow me to do this, because I couldn't remove it when the plastic hand wheel was in place. Just look how much sealant has been applied to these parts. After removing the valve, I refitted the plastic hand wheel so I didn't lose it. This is the 90 degree elbow on the other side, and once again, look at the sheer volume of sealant that's been applied. I don't know what this stuff is, it's very hard and very solid, it almost looks like epoxy resin. It's also very brittle because when I removed the elbow, most of it fell off, but a bit was left and it was quite stubborn. And then, before I forgot, I removed the sealant from the inside of the hole too. Here's another shot of the state of the port face, this is absolutely no good. I've cleaned up the internal part of the water chest, so here I'm about to test it to see if it works in double acting mode. Having cleaned quite a lot of sealant off the balls in this water chest, there seem to be sealing now because the pump is working in double acting mode, pumping water at every stroke. In order to remove the cylinder, there are a few things that need taking off, all this valve gear, as well as the piston needs removing. I'm applying some oil to the piston for no apparent reason really. I'm more interested what this hole in the top is. I tried applying some oil under pressure, but it didn't come out anywhere, so it's not an oiling point. Then the penny dropped. This is what was left of some of the cross drillings. The original builder must have machined into the block to allow the drill to be at the correct angle to break through into the ports on the port face. Normally for this job, you would cross drill into the block then you would thread the holes that you didn't want and insert a bolt, which effectively plugs the hole. In order to remove the cylinder, the first thing to go is the piston, which is just held to the piston rod using a large nut. This removed very easily without event. Now to get rid of the valve gear, using an Allen key in the Allen head bolts, I slackened them off so I could withdraw the valve gear as one unit. The last part of the job was to remove two nuts from the top of the columns. You will notice that on one side there's a washer underneath. This is to correct an obvious error in the length of the columns. I'll leave this where it is for the time being. Once I had the cylinder on the bench, I removed the gland cover to have a look at the state of the o-ring. The o-ring that's fitted to the water cylinder leaks quite badly, so I'm assuming that this one's going to do the same. Either way, I'll replace both of them. You can see the old Viton o-ring at the top left of the screen. Over now to the milling machine for the fun part. I'm using a face cutter and I'm going to clean up the port face with this. When you machine cast iron in the home workshop, it's a good idea to make sure that you don't have the cutter revolving too fast. I've clamped the cylinder tightly into the machine vise as squarely as I can get it to fit. But the first thing I do before I start the machine is run the cutter across the port face to see where it's touching. It's not perfect, but I don't think the machining of the original port face was perfect either. This job took quite a long time to do, and it's very nerve-wracking, but it shouldn't be. If it fouls up and destroys the cylinder, then I have to make another cylinder, which is not the end of the world. But if I had to do that, then all profit on this job would be lost because of the time it would take to make a new cylinder. Plus, of course, I would have to buy a new cylinder from Blackgates Engineering who are the current owners of the South of Engines Empire, small as it may be. I'm going to try really hard not to destroy this component. My old milling machine doesn't have any auto feeds. To traverse the table, I'm winding the handle. First of all, I wind it quite fast in order to rough cut the part and remove the corrosion, but I'm only removing a very small amount of metal at each pass. In the end, as a guess, I think I removed 15 to 20 thou to get through the corrosion, which was deeper than it first looked. It won't be a problem though, when the engine's reassembled, the 20 thou is nothing to worry about, because don't forget, when I reassemble this engine, I'm fitting gaskets. Before I finish this sequence, I'd just like to mention that you've been watching it running at 400%, four times normal speed.
In order to get a good finish on the port face for the final cut and move the handle very slowly. And now for the big clean up. I did get quite a good finish on the port face anyway which would be fine without doing this but I like to make sure everything is nice and flat and a good finish. To clean up the port face and remove any of the machining marks I'm using 400 grade wet dry sandpaper. I started off using WD-40 as a lubricant and now I'm using T-Cut. Apparently some expert viewers told me you must always work in a figure of eight movement. And I try to do that when I remember, but in this case left to right will be okay. When the engine's assembled and running the slide valves will move from top to bottom and that will finish the job off. The cylinder wasn't very bad but there were one or two scabs in there so I thought I would take this opportunity to just hone the cylinder to get a better finish. I've had this honing set for many years, it's very cheap and nasty but it always does the job. It's currently fitted into my small electric drill and I'm using WD-40 as a cutting lubricant. Here I'm having to use emery cloth to remove the sealant and this seems to be doing the trick. I finish the job off by rubbing the cylinder on some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper on the surface plate. And that's about it for this video, the port face is now nice and shiny. The next job will be making sure that all the ports go where they're supposed to go and aren't blocked up with sealant or rust. All of the components are going to be put into my ultrasonic cleaner. Then before reassembly all I need to do is make and fit two new slide valves and some 4BA studs to hold the steam chest cover and the steam chest to the cylinder block. Please stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.